Right, next job. Apparently, it's a little device that breaks the vacuum on uh, vacuum sealed jars. I believe you can buy them in trash and treasure shops for two dollars each. Why the man wants me to make uh, four of them in aluminium, well, I, I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> no idea. At least going back to boxes, uh, more like the stuff I like to use. <laughs> Right, facing sand. It should, in theory, be a nice, straightforward, easy job. We hope. Back up sand. Oh, these little boxes, so much, so much easier to ram up. Ah, they're almost fun after that big beast. I seem to have got myself a bit spread out here. That'll do. Ah, this box is locking a little. I have to see if we can ease that a bit. Clean out the pinhole. Clean the pin itself. bit of graphite on them both. Which is the shorter pin? This one, I think. So this one should be the one that goes there. That's better. Sprue. Put the sprue about there, I think. Ah, not winning today here. A little bit of facing sand again after I sweep the pattern clean.
enough. Ah, oh, here comes my cup of tea. Excellent. Ah, oh, cup of tea. Ah. Oh, a bit hot, a bit nice. Oh. Yeah, those glasses have got a bit uh, fogged up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's cut a decent pouring basin for this one. Bit more over to here, I think. I'll just put a little bit of Right. Radius that ridge sprue junction there. Radius the whole the top edge. Just de just that's not too bad. <coughs> to have a very strange noise emanating from my air compressor maybe I should go have a bit of a look and see what it's doing I'll just um, no I might cut the gate in the side here yeah I might let's we'll just have a look and see what it looks like when I get it out Got a runner down here. Now I won't actually cut the gate at the moment. I'll wait till I get it out, get the pattern out, and then we'll see what it looks like.
hopefully now the pattern will stay down when I lift this box off it. Hopefully. Yes, not too bad at all. Okay, now I think, <sighs> hmm, I think we might, yes, yeah, it's, it's a bit difficult to know where to gate it. Maybe here. That'll do, I think. baseboard I think is one <laughs> do a trial close That's one. Now I think this time we might do something a little different with the gate. We'll come into the top straight over like this, I think. There we go. We'll try that one. At least then all the, the gate, etc., is on the flat back of the part and should be fairly easy to clean off. There we go. Cutter runner, where have we got to go to? Yeah, down to about here again as usual. but we'll give it to him.
it's more like my size of mold. They're not too bad. They're not too bad at all, those. Not that hot still <laughs> anymore either. The sand's cool, the, cooled them off. But that's uh, oh, that's not uh, not too unreasonable at casting. That I'm quite happy with that one. Now these things, which as I've said before, are just something you stick on top of a jar and flick them to break the vacuum seal in the jar, and that there has to be a little slot cut through here. Um, I mean, you can buy these things in, in, in op shops for $5 each, but uh, they break apparently, and these ones I don't think will. These actually are a rather interesting example of just how you can get a good surface finish. These have, have finished remarkably well. You know, I mean, that, that finish, it just, it's so smooth, it's almost like a glass sheet to my hands anyway. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. The question is, why? Well, first of all, my fine sand, fine facing sand, most definitely helps a bit there, but quite a bit. But there are other factors at work. First of all, the temperature I've poured at was probably just about the minimum I could get away with. There's a bit of rounding on that edge there, which suggests that the temperature was a bit on the low, or maybe that the runner was a little bit light on too, who knows. Um, but the other things that have helped is the use of a decent pouring basin, the use of a tapered sprue. These give us a controlled flow of metal that is as turbulent free as possible. Secondly, we're gating into a feeder. Now, that means that the feeder is going to be full of the hottest metal from a point of view of feeding, but also the feeder takes out any pressure pulse that might come when the casting fills so uh, that there's no sort of impact, no slamming of the metal into the mould. In addition, and this is probably one of the most important things, the head height of the whole casting is only, well, that's a little over three inches, I think, just barely over three inches. And that's obviously more than adequate to get the casting to fill, but it hasn't been so much as to force metal into the fine uh, areas between the grains of sand. The idea of, of extending your metal way up here with huge funnels and huge sprues, it's a total nonsense. All it will ever do is give you very rough castings of low internal uh, quality. As I say, you know, if someone with an 8-inch high sprue thinks they can beat that finish, let them go to it.